Hello everybody, I am Travis and I'm making this tutorial video for Unreal Engine 4 specifically for FX artists that are interested in implementing their own impact effects for the gameplay elements of the game that they're creating. And this could be for indie developers or people just want to help out their teams by being able to do that. So one of the cool things that was going through my mind is what if instead of tying our effects to any one object, we could tie them dynamically to whatever the type of material or surface that you end up using. That way, let's say you're hitting wood, you're going to spawn particles that are conducive with how the wood is. If it's water, it's going to give you particle impacts that are water-based, right? So that dynamic approach was the problem I set out to do. So this tutorial is really going to expand that and just kind of show you a quick, a, a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about. Each of these little blocks offer a different type of impact that come out. We've got wood, metal, water, and then as an example, flesh. Now I get it, that is not what a human flesh looks like, but bear with me. All right, so that's what this tutorial is about. Let's jump into the next section. I wanna first begin by defining what Unreal Engine is trying to say when they talk about physical materials. And you can come to the documentation page on their website and really read up on all of it. But really it's just used to define the response of a physical object when it's interacting dynamically with the world. And there's a whole bunch of different properties and settings that you can do to adjust the modifications of it. But for now, I just wanna focus on being able to create a physical material so you can use it for your effect. So let's go through that together, eh? I have some impacts already that I've created on different physical materials. And we'll go ahead and start by creating a brand new one. And uh, let's create a folder, call it concrete. So we'll store all of our materials and effects related to the physical material concrete here. Now the first thing we have to do is actually go into the project settings. Under the physics tab, we can scroll down through the engine physics and toward the bottom, we've got the physical surface. You can have up to 62 different types and we'll go ahead and create a new one and call it concrete. If I can spell correctly, that is. So one thing that I've noticed about creating new physical materials, you actually end up having to close the client and reload the client to get them to register. Even if you save, I don't know why that is. Uh, it is just what it is. So we'll go ahead and reload it here real quick. Open that up. Just a side note while this loads up, 4.25 did come out and there have been some noticeable improvements to Niagara. So I'm super excited to be jumping in there and checking out the new particle system. Cool. So we have uploaded it. And to create a physical material once we put it into the project editor, it's real simple. We can go ahead and right click and come under the physics asset here. And here it is, physical material. Let's go ahead and create a new one. Start by selecting the physical material button here. And we'll give it a name, PM for physical material, concrete. I can't spell concrete today. And if we open up the concrete, this is what the physical material looks like. I'm not gonna go into all the details here, but the most important piece is the surface type down here. And we have to set what we did in the project settings for that. So here's the PM concrete that we did in the project settings. Go ahead and save that and close that out. Now that we have our physical material ready, let's create a material to actually put it on. So we'll create a brand new material and call this one for concrete. And we'll open this one up. Now to add the physical material physics piece to the actual material, you'll notice here on the left side, we've got the physical material. And this is where we plug it in. Just 
like that. So we'll plug that in there. And just so we can see it out in the world, let's go ahead and create a physical material with just a base color, uh, just to kind of get it out. What color is concrete? It's kind of gray, right? We'll make it a little gray there. Gray like uh, old man Gandalf's beard. <laughs> there we go. And now we have a material. One thing I want to mention about creating materials is that when you do a material instance, instance, material instance, you can actually change the physical material from whatever the default is to match the dynamic material that you want to use. So that's super helpful if you want to reuse the same material, but you want to change the physical material. And I know that's getting a little um, redundant with the material, physical material. Bear with me. All right. So the material is created. Now it's time to plug it into the game. We'll create a just a block. Just drag a cylinder in here and we'll apply the new material that we got onto the cylinder and save. And now let's go into the next part. All right, now that we've set up our material, let's go ahead and jump into the blueprint and set up the interaction for it within the gameplay. So I am using the first person template within Unreal, but if you want to create your own blueprint, you certainly can as well. I, this is applicable across the field, and I'll try and talk through some of the points of the blueprint itself. But this is the first person character blueprint. And if we open it up, it's a lot of spaghetti to look at, but let me kind of break it down as simple as I can, right? So the top portion is all what's included with the original blueprint. What we're interested in is going to be in the bottom portion here, which we're going to talk about. And we'll go from left to right to kind of talk it through, right? To start, we have our input action, and this is the event trigger that gets it going. In this case, it is pushing the left mouse button to activate, and you can change this out in any direction you want. Just a fun tip if you're curious about the game pad controls. If you go under project settings, you can actually find all of the gameplay controls. Um, under one of these, <laughs> input. And under input, we can see we have our movement inputs and our fire inputs. So in this case, to fire, you can push any of these buttons and it's hooked up to different devices outside just the computer. Once you input it into the project settings, then it appears within the blueprint for you to activate. And you can just type in the input and you'll see a whole bunch of different types of inputs that you can pick and choose from, all of these. But we're just gonna use the left trigger right now. You'll notice that I did include a muzzle flash in my fire. Um, this is kind of a hacky way to get it, but as part of the viewport, uh, I did take a muzzle flash particle system and I plugged it onto the end of the weapon. So whenever I left click it just fires it so you can see it from the first person camera which is really great so this is just activating it and deactivating it now this portion right here is looking at how the line trace works for the first person shooter where is the target location of the player and where is the player facing where the line trace is going to go out and there's lots of tutorials out there i'm not going to dive too much into that but once you get that set up what we're interested in now is like the break hit result how does the system know which emitter to play based off of the impact site right that's the big question so it turns out there is a physical material um, location that we can go off of. And here, if you click, um, you can actually pull it out and type in switch, sorry, um, physical, oh, get surface type, right? And when you get surface type, then you can switch 
on your physical surface. And your physical surface is going to include all of the ones that you have in your project system. So we remember that we had the PM concrete that we added. So that has been added in here as a physical surface. Now we can use it. So let's do that. I have this one that I've already created and we'll come all the way down here. And we need to figure out what's going to happen when the line trace hits a concrete. And I've already got these other ones, but I'm going to place this one down here. And we want to spawn an emitter at the location of the line trace target. And in this case, let's just pick uh, one from the starter content, right? So uh, we have the explosion one uh, that we can use. And I think that's P explosion. You can see here it says game starter content particles if you wanted to find it. But you can plug anyone in here, right? Now, there's one piece that we need to do to make this work, and we need to specify the location of the impact site. So if we grab this and we drag it all the way up here to the break hit result, we have a location spot right here. So we can plug it in right there. And now what you see is that I've chained together for every single physical material, whether it's flesh, wood, water, glass, leaves, concrete, they all have different emitters that spawn as a result. This is how we're setting it up. But let's test it out for a quick sec, right? So um, I like to add a print string just as a uh, indicator that it is working. So we'll just type in concrete here to add that. We'll go ahead and compile and save. Remember guys, you have to compile and save um, if you do just one, sometimes it's kind of wonky and it doesn't work. And let's go ahead and push the play button and test that out on our new concrete block that we chose. Ooh, the explosion's happening. And it's saying concrete up there for us as well. That's awesome. It means everything worked out fine. So if we just take another block over here and take our concrete material that we just made, concrete, and let's just plug it in there, hit that save button, and push play again. There it is. We have now officially added in our awesome material in the blueprint. Awesome, so now you know how to dynamically create materials with physical properties for you to have different impact effects happen depending on what kind of material you're hitting. But I want to show you a couple more tips and tricks to really kind of expand and accentuate some of your capabilities as an FX artist being able to implement your effects. So if we take this piece of glass right here, when we shoot it, we're getting the physical material that we had before, but we can add decals to it as well. So those are kind of like impact effects on top of the particle systems. We can also add destructible meshes as part of that timeline as well. So you can break them apart. Now, one of the big reasons why it's so awesome having multiple material physical surfaces is the actual meshes that we have may have different types of materials attached to it. So depending on where you hit the mesh, you can have different types of um, emitters spawn as a result. So with the tree, you've got the leaves and you also have the splinters from the tree. And finally, impulse is a big piece as well. So our mannequin, we can have very dynamic um, impulses on top of the uh, on top of the, the particles themselves. So all of that stuff is super cool. And if we jump back into our blueprint for a second, let me just kind of show you how I set that up in case you want to kind of chain them together. Now before, we had just gone from our line trace directly into our physical material. But if we create if then else statements, we can trigger the destructible components by using this piece and attaching radial damage to it. Um, if you're interested in learning about destructible meshes, there's other tutorials out there for you to check out as well. Um, maybe I'll link them in the description for you as well. Same thing with the skeletal mesh. You just assign it, 
and we can simulate physics with an impulse. For both the destructible mesh and the skeletal mesh, you're going to replicate the same process that you did with just a primitive component or mesh as well. So right here, when we have a skeletal mesh with flesh, we can emit the blood and keep the impulse and physics in place as well. So it's very interactive and dynamic on how you're connecting with it. Same thing over here with the destructible component. You can create different types of materials um, and emitters on top of that as well. So it's super cool how you can really kind of daisy chain these together and create this amazing stuff. All right. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial to show you how you can set up your own emitters in Unreal Engine 4's Blueprint and create all kinds of cool effects that go on different materials depending on the physical nature of it. <laughs>